Today we're doing something a little different. Jackery sponsored this video where we're gonna be outfitting Colin's dad's boat with about as much tech as we can cram into it. And hopefully we're approaching at the right angle here because I can't freaking see where I'm going, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, how y'all doing, guys? Hey, a continuity error. We're pretending it's still in the box. Oh, we're, God. We're gonna have some fun today, ladies and gentlemen. I I mean, I did. Step one is to get the entertainment system going. You can see we've got a nice lounging sort of, I don't know, chaise, bed. Is this a bed? Yep. This is a bed. It's a bunk. And we're gonna put a TV on it. So this is a nice picture. So this is the boat my dad used to be a chef on and uh, it's called the Hotai, still around. Uh, when I was born, he was working on this boat and they hopped him in a float plane and flew him to the airport. Well, the thing about when you mount something on a boat is it seems like you do it in such a way as to such, if there's waves, I, I, it doesn't. I, I, I can see it. <laughs> and I guess the idea is we've got this full range mount so you can either lounge in the bed and watch uh, or uh, pull it out. Oh. You got a wrong way. What? So the idea then. I need to keep trucking on this wiring otherwise it's not gonna get done. I'm gonna be working on getting the Jackery actually ready to plug in. So we're gonna be taking this chonker extension cord. We're gonna snip the end off of it and we're gonna run it down into the cabin below the floor and back to where the house wiring is, where we're gonna connect it to a rotary switch. So this is the front bridge, and there's some random wiring kicking around here, but critically, there's a hole that goes down to by the steering wheel down below. And that's where this guy's gonna go, and hopefully it'll just go right through. There we go, okay. That was easy. Where I'm laying now is where the jackery will be bolted down. And then uh, we'll have 12 volt power to recharge it coming from this port that I put in not too long ago. And now we're gonna fish it down. We're gonna open up this deck and I'm gonna straddle the big diesel motor. I'm gonna run it under the deck and into where the house wiring comes in. And that's where the majority of this work is gonna take place. Because there's already outlets and 120 everywhere in the boat. It's just a matter of getting the power from the jackery up there down into here. Oh, this is gonna take a while. Slightly awkward thing for compact space saving living arrangements. Um, small TVs don't really exist anymore. But that's okay because thankfully monitors do. So we've got a UR2855 28 inch monitor here. It's an IPS type monitor. It's got support for HDR. It's got an HDMI input. So we'll be able to use it with our Apple TV and all that good stuff. And of course, critically, it has a VESA compatible mount on the back. I'm good, don't worry. I see the cable. Oh, well, that's just light right in my eye. I'm standing on the valve covers of a lovely Ford diesel motor. Now I get to get comfortable again. Get in there. At least it's not 46 degrees. This is a AC rotary switch. So we have three inputs and an off circuit. So that means we're gonna have the jackery as one of our inputs, and then you can switch it to another input and that'll be running off shore power. And then the third input is just there because buying the two position switch was more expensive than buying the three position switch. I mean, really this went way easier than I thought it was going to go. But you know, mark my words, it's now gonna be two hours of fiddling. We've already got one thing that might bone us here though, Colin. Uh, there are several standards for the VESA mount in terms of spacing, and the back of this monitor is kind of stylistically curved. Uh, there might be spacers in the uh, in the hardware. Spacers. All right. Yeah, check the the beautifully laid out hardware kit that comes in those Canto mounts. Colin's all into Canto now that they give his friend and his dad uh, free mounts. Absolute Canto shell over here. All right, that's on. Don't know about you, Colin, but I'm making some pretty good pro. Ooh, wow. Oh boy. That's some Samsung quality right there. Maximum sag. <laughs> Unfortunately, our mounting kit only comes with big old chungus wood screws because they assume you're gonna do something sensible like screw into a stud, but we don't have a stud. We just have this quarter inch wooden panel here. So we had to go digging through Colin's, what do you call this, a bag of prayers? A bag of dreams. Bag of dreams. Uh, <laughs> to find some nuts and bolts. And we did, right against the window. Oh yeah, cause you gotta walk past it and stuff, yeah. hey? Okay. Okay, do you wanna mark it? I would like to. How? Haha. <laughs> uh... Okay, yeah, so that is like an inch from the center bar. We're not gonna worry too much about it being level because realistically all it takes is me to shift my body weight <laughs> and we're gonna move it about four or five degrees anyway. 
So what's the deal? You mentioned your dad was a chef on a boat before. So what do you guys do? Like fish or like? Well, that's that's the plan. So we have rod holders sitting up top here and, and chart holders. Cool. But we haven't actually taken the boat out really. We took it down the down the way once for five minutes and then back and then had lunch. Oh, uh, so you just got it? We just got it. It, oh. it took nine months to get it here because we were purchasing it during COVID. Oh, cool. So that's where that's why you guys have been putting like so much work into it lately. Well, yeah, summer's oh, here. Fun. We want to go do things. Oh, yeah. right. Well, we're going to be teched out by the end of this video. That's the dream. On it goes. Hold on, let's just, yeah. you don't really yeah, need that. You wanna pull it out? Comes out a little something like that. Ah, oh yeah. <laughs> now in true Colin fashion, we'll be mounting the Apple TV using VHB. Am I just YOLOing this, Colin? There's yep. just no rules? No rules. Okay. Make our own rules here. Does that cable management cut your mustard, Colin? Oh, A plus. All right, it's in there. I'm ready to go plug it in. I don't see the fire extinguisher. So one should give you shore power. That. So the wiring's done, but shore power isn't working for some reason. I don't know if I flubbed a wire. I don't think I did. So we're gonna plug in the Jackery and then we're gonna see if that turns on the monitor. For my next project, while well, Colin diagnoses what's going on with the power switch that hopefully works, is to put these Polk speakers up on the back deck here. Or excuse me, the uh, stern deck. Stern deck, yes. Are these uh, weather sealed, Colin? Yeah, they're weatherproof and they're salt water resistant. The screw will go through the This wall has seen some things, okay? This boat is 50 years old. All wood. Man, this would be a fun kind of project. Where's my dad's boat? This is one small thing we may not have foreseen. This uh, appears to have a bit of a clearance issue with this speaker majig. Can you fix it? Yes, I can fix it. Look at you go. All right, Colin, the good news is that uh, the bracket's on. Are you applying there's bad news? Uh, the bad news is that there are now extra holes in the wall. Well, uh, that's what Bondo's for. Sweet. The problem we're having is we've validated that power is getting through the switch. But validated nothing... the switch functions. Validated the switch functions. And we're connected to shore power. I can see the voltage. I can see it come across the switch. But we're not getting any power to the outlets. Ooh. Why are you not running? So that's what we're diagnosing now. The dud AC power switch ended up being human error. Colin found a little jumper that had fallen out of the first switch, so with that fixed, what can uh, I hook up next? Uh, I did the speakers. You want to do the mount the subwoofer? Okay, I found your subwoofer. Okay. Oh, this is our plan for the video today. Yeah, that's all the stuff we had to do. Well, now I don't have to keep asking Colin what to do next. <laughs> <laughs> and you wanted it in the very corner seat, is that right? Uh, I think like in the wall between the two seats. I heard the shop back come on. <laughs> I think it's working. Now that we've got power, we can fire up our monitor and uh, hopefully set up the Apple TV. We're good, we're done. As much capacity as the Jackery has though, obviously we're gonna need to charge it. So that is where these come in. We've got not one, not two, not three, but four of these Jackery solar generators. And these are good for about 200 watts each. Yeah, so total that's 800 watts, which is more than enough to run everything that would like normally be running on the boat. So we're pulling in, wow, it's still climbing. Yeah. Uh, 275 watts with uh, two panels. Our draw right now with the Apple TV and the actual monitor is 294 watts. Okay, so that speaker's definitely working. Now these guys are not going. No, they're not plugged in yet, but base. We're moored right now. No, turn up. We're actually kind of getting there. So right now, two panels will run the, indefinitely. In, the entertainment system indefinitely. Well, is the fridge running now too? Yes. Oh, compressor's going. Yep. And we're now at 7423 watts. I'm checking out the solar panels on the top. Look, Brandon's in the video for a change. We totally could get more up here. Feasibly with two more panels, we'd be fully running this boat and then some. Wow. Well, here, let's try it. So the trick is if I fall, jump hard, hey? I'm good, I got this. Yes. Oh my gosh. I just see the end <laughs> flop out over. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> well, whatever the cloth might think about it, the frame seems okay. Uh, I am completely expendable. <laughs> it's not like if I die, everyone's out of work or anything. 
We are inputting 500 watts. 500 watts from the solar panels? Yes, we are charging. It'll be fully charged in two and a half hours. That is sick. While running everything. That is awesome. On the tech side of things, the M1 12.9 inch iPad Pro is both the navigation and media hub. When you're steering from the cabin, it resides in a 12 inch Ram mounts tablet mount above the helm, keeping everything within arm's reach. From here, you can flip through charts and avionics, view wind and weather information with Windy, and control media, or even watch a movie. Colin loaded it up with iPadOS 15 Beta 2 as well to take advantage of the improved multitasking capabilities. There's no networking on the boat, so an iPhone is used as a wireless hotspot whenever it's needed, but that doesn't come up that often because the iPad and the Apple TV under the cabinet here can airplay without it. Okay. Ah! Now the existing stereo didn't work, but some new wires to the six and a half inch Kenwood speakers fixed that. And I made these speakers. I think that looks pretty darn good. So we're gonna get this whole boat spick and span and uh, we'll get Linus to give you a tour of the boat. A week of naggy little details later and the Jackery install is finally complete. A custom bimini cover is being designed by North Sales to hold three or four of the Solar Saga 200 panels for a peak output of between 600 and 800 watts all off the grid. Running all the tech on the boat, that's the fridge, freezer, Apple TV, and monitor, power draw is around 360 watts. That actually leaves us with a surplus of power, that is, until we add the hot water tank to the mix. With that, we actually hit the maximum of 1500 watts that we can get out of a single socket on the Jackery. Now the Jackery can output more, it just needs to go through multiple outlets. So Fiddler has come from being a tired trawler to a tech cruiser, all thanks to Jackery's solar system. So she'll be able to motor around to her heart's content with ample power to run all day and all night, and even more importantly, she'll do so silently. No generator noise, just nice, quiet sunshine juice. Which is a big plus for neighboring boaters or noise sensitive activities. This was a huge build that took a ton of evenings and a lot of weekend work by Colin and his dad, Gerald. So I'd like to thank them for their effort. Wait a minute, thank them for their effort. How did that end up in the script? They're working on their boat. I guess they did offer to give me a ride though. So that's cool. Oh, and of course, I've got to thank Jackery again for sponsoring this video.